Welcome to Cheat the Spread, powered by 613 Sports. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to episode seven of Cheat the Spread. Thanks for joining us. We've been on a little bit of a two week break. You know, we have our explanation. School has been kicking our behinds recently. We didn't have time last week to get an episode out, so we could not get one done. We didn't do one the week before. I don't, or sorry, we didn't do it last week. We got too busy with school. We didn't have time to get one out in time, and there was no football going on this week. We did not have time Friday. We're doing this Friday night. We're going to post, since you know, Super Bowl weekend, we got the whole weekend. We got a big weekend of games coming up. So we're posting this Saturday. You guys are watching this on Saturday. The goal going forward, though, is to do same day episodes on Friday. So we'll post episodes, record them Friday morning, uh, hopefully post them Friday afternoon, evening, and you can watch them going forward on Fridays and watch some games. Hopefully our lines will usually be for Friday nights. If we're lucky, sometimes weekend games will mostly be for Friday nights. But this week, Super Bowl week, we're ready to go. We're fired up. Jack, how you feeling? Feeling good, man. Yeah, like you said, obviously last week, um, we're trying to adapt to COVID times, trying to be fluid, but I think we made a good call in terms of this is the last week of football. We got to soak this in. I mean, after this is going to be all hockey and basketball, which isn't a bad thing, but I mean, Tom Parady versus the baby goat, like we've got to soak this up, I think, but I'm excited. For sure. And Jack and I, we did have a little bit of a cold week two weeks ago, but you know, since we got our week off, we're ready to go again. We've been back in the lab. We're cooking it up. We got a whole lots of plays this week. We're ready to go. And with that said, we can get right into our stayaways. Jack can take us off with that. For sure. So um, there's not a lot, obviously, like lock dog tease. We're not really going to tease anything because there's not it's more than one game. But for my stay away, it's just going to be totals um, because Super Bowl totals, Super Bowl totals. Totals for the Super Bowl. Yeah, sorry. I should clarify that just because I, my head says over with Mahomes and Brady but if you look at the history of Super Bowls I think it's something ridiculous to the under like the under becomes way more prevalent because they slow it down um I've seen some experts uh recommend under in the first quarter 10 and a half because I think it's 7-3 but for me I don't really want to touch a total like that to be honest um I'm looking at the prop market mostly and I am going to pick a side because of course Super Bowl I got to be involved but other than that I'm not touching the total for sure my stay away we're going to the ice Sens versus Habs you know, we got the sense that they didn't get lucky. They kicked the Habs' ass on Thursday night. But well, only the shots were a bit different. But it doesn't matter. All that matters is the goals and the Matt sense Murray. more than the Habs did. Um, and the only consistency the sense of had has been consistently bad this year. So there's no way we can count on them to win two games in a row, especially against a team that's been dominating like the Habs. But the Sens always play the Habs hard. So, you know, this game could go either way, realistically. So I'm staying away from this one because, you know what, if I bet the Habs, I guarantee the Sens win. And if I bet the Sens, I guarantee the Habs win. It's just my luck with the Sens sometimes. So I'm staying away from this one and hopefully just watch it and watch the Habs fans and Noah cry all night in our DMs again. Yeah, I sent Cam a text when it, in the third period. I asked him, tell me you bet on the Sens tonight because I'm in a Discord with a lot of people who were big on the Habs. They were fading the Sens and that really bit them. So, I mean, I'm not sure who had the sense, but that was a nice lottery ticket. I mean, <laughs> did. Everybody was watching them consistently. They know that was the perfect... Eddie's been telling me all week that was the perfect game for the sense to win. And of course they did because the sense just always... Whenever you count them out, finally, whenever fans finally give up, they somehow find a way to draw us back in. It's exactly what they did uh, on Thursday night. It's the old Jets versus Rams move. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, for sure. So we're going to move to our lock dog and no tease. Well, oh, actually, Cam did the same I game. Tease, tease, but, you know, just for old time's sake, this is our last one of the season. I had Why to not? there, but Jack can get you through our locks, first of all. For sure. So, I mean, we use the term lock kind of loosely again because it's the Super Bowl. I mean, Cam's going to throw together a little NBA parlay gold for you guys. But for me... Um, this is just going to be my big pick, and I'm going to say Kansas City money line. Because while it's hard to bet against Tom Brady, in my opinion, it's almost impossible to bet against Mahomes. And then we made that mistake last week, and you see, or two weeks ago rather, and you see the poster behind me. Um, I was skeptical of KC, but th- they turned it on. You know, to me, this is like. I've heard this analogy before, and I think it's true that this Kansas City team is like the Warriors of old, where they can just turn on the switch, and it's like Kevin Durant. Um, Patrick Mahomes is Steph Curry, Kelsey is Kevin Durant, and you know Tyree kills Clay Thompson. Like, there's just so many weapons. The only thing that gives me pause and why I think this isn't a slam dunk is because the two starting linemen for Kansas City being out against this defensive line that we saw has been really good. Um, and you, I remember last week a big storyline was Green Bay's replacement left tackle for Bakhtiari. Everyone was like, "Oh, he's been doing great. He'll be ready for Tampa Bay," and he got destroyed. I think it was, I don't know if it was Pierre Paul on that side, but that guy got beat consistently. So that is scary. So I, there is an argument for Tampa, but for me, wait till pregame because I think Brady money is going to come in for the public or if you want to be even riskier. But if Kansas City scores first, you're kind of screwed here. But wait, 
to see if they go down. That's what we should have done against the Bills. When, they, when the Chiefs went down 9 nothing, the smart people were getting on Kansas City. I wasn't smart. I was a Bills fan, unfortunately. I got on it. Did you actually? Yeah, but not a lot. Damn. Okay, that was smart. Um, <laughs> yeah. If, if possible, I want Kansas City money line below 150. Um, just quickly, one thing to add. Um, a lot of experts are saying if you want Kansas City, just bet Mahomes MVP because you're getting minus 120 and you're not having to lay points. Personally, I'm a bit more reluctant on that because I can see a scenario where Hill or Kelsey win if they go nuts. Don't think it's likely, but that's something that you could consider if you like Kansas City. Sure, man. For my lock this week, you know, I don't feel strong enough one way or another to call either the Bucks or the Chiefs a lock. So I'm going to the court. I'm going to the hardwood. But there's no lines yet posted for these games. So I think I'm just going to pick my three safest, I would say, money lines whenever these odds are posted. Um... You'll be watching this on Saturday, so you'll have more info. If any star players are out because of COVID, stay away from this bet. It's kind of nullified. But I would take Milwaukee Bucks, Lakers, and Denver Nuggets. All three of their money lines, parlay them. Sleep, par, partner, partner. Parlay? That's the one. Parlay! You should get at least some decent odds, and I would just parlay their money lines. They're all playing inferior teams, and it should be good value on what is, you know, we don't have the spreads yet right now. We don't have uh, any information like that, but the NHL is falling apart right now. They've got, I think, four games postponed tomorrow, Saturday night. So I would stay away from any NHL action, really, for that. Um, NBA seems to be doing a little bit better than the NHL right now, so this hopefully should be a little bit safer. But yeah, without feeling too strongly one way or another about the Super Bowl, I'm going to go with the uh, NBA parlay here for you guys. Definitely think it makes some sense. The only thing that would scare you there is if one of those teams gets bored, which happens the regular season, but that's <laughs> yeah. definitely irrational. Like, I can't pick. They're all playing worse teams. I think there's some logic there. Um, for my dog, I'm going to look at the Knicks money line, if plus money. And again, we don't have the line. We don't know if they're going to be dogs tomorrow, but they're taking on the Portland Trailblazers. They are at home. Let me just confirm that. Yes, they are at home. Uh, they lost the last one by one point, I think. Like the Trailblazers barely squeaked it out. And the Blazers don't have McCollum. And the Knicks are a top 10 defensive team, especially against point guards. They've really been strapping people down. I've been really impressed with Emmanuel quickly. So, And dogs in the NBA are kind of the way to go a lot of the time because there's so much randomness to what's been going on. So I would look at the Knicks money line, if plus money, uh, no CJ McCollum. Lillard's going to go off, but it's a matter of what can anyone else do. And uh, you could say maybe it's a Carmelo revenge game against the Knicks. I don't buy that. <laughs> I think Mark Carmelo's a bit on the downhill so i'm gonna take the next and for my dog we're going back to super bowl since i told you guys you know i'm not feeling too strongly one way or another you might as well lay the dog in this game because honestly anything could happen so you got some good value there uh, i've seen this line at some different places i've seen it at three i've seen it at three and a half if you can find this line at plus three and a half for the buccaneers i would be all over that it's been moving a lot so i don't know if you guys want to wait you can take your risk with that see if it goes down or not but i would take the bucks plus three and a half I think no matter what, this game's going to be close. Even if the Bucs don't pull it off, three and a half is still a great value for, you know, Tom Brady in what could be his last Super Bowl. We don't know. And I think he's going to come and want to show out. You know, he's I, Tom Brady gets offended very easily. Put that MJ meme right here. That's Tom Brady every single week. And everybody's saying Mahomes is the new GOAT. Mahomes is taking over for Brady. You got, you could be crazy you think Tom Brady's not pissed off about that. I'll touch on that a little bit more in my teaser. But yeah, if you can get the Bucs three and a half, I don't see Tom Brady losing my Super Bowl by more than the touchdown. So... I would get on that three and a half line. I think there's some good value there. And this Bucks defense is crazy. If anyone could shut down the Chiefs, besides the Niners fully healthy, it'd probably be the Bucks. I think that's fair. And um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of sharp people on Tampa. And like, this isn't a game where, you know, I used Kansas City in my lock segment, but I don't think there really is a lock in this game. Um, I just trust Mahomes a bit more. But another thing you could we could add is if you'd like the Mahomes angle for MVP, if you like Tampa um, and you don't want to, We'll take the plus 145 money line I'm seeing on 365. If I look up Brady MVP, um, it's plus 184. And if the Bucks win, like Cam and I were saying beforehand, there's no way the sports Raiders aren't giving it to Brady, 43-year-old Brady. 100%. Yeah, at home in his backyard. So you can look to that if you like the Bucks. I think uh, I think that makes a lot of sense as well. And then moving into that, uh, I do have a teaser for you guys. Now that I'm thinking about it, I might actually lean under. I originally wrote down the over, but now that I'm remembering, this game could end up being a pretty bad weather game. We don't know. It sounds like they're calling for rain. I've heard even possibly thunderstorms. So that could change this. I might want to wait until game time or right before the game, see what the weather's like. If the weather is clear or, you know, just a little cloudy, no rain, nothing crazy like that, I'm definitely on the over at 49 and a half. Tease that all the way down to over 49 and a half. But if it is bad weather, take the under. Uh, but I'm teasing also the Bucks up to plus 9.5. Uh, you can get this at 10 if you get them at three and a half, actually. But 
like I said previously, there is no way Tom Brady's getting blown out in the Super Bowl. There, it just doesn't happen. You, we've seen last two weeks ago, he threw three picks and they still won that game. There's just somehow, I don't know how far the horseshoe is up Tom Brady's behind, but somehow he always finds a way. No matter how outmatched they are, there's no chance they're getting blown out. We saw even 28-3. I think today, Friday, is like the two three year anniversary. There's no way Tom Brady's getting blown out in the Super Bowl. As much as I hate him, he's not getting blown out. So plus nine and a half is great value. And then watch the weather before the game. If it is clear, bet the over 49 and a half. If it is raining and pretty bad weather, bet the under. You can probably get that at, I think, I think I saw it at 56 and a half pregame, the regular line. So you can probably get that under 61, which I think is great value there as well. Definitely. I mean, the under is 100% the sharp side if you want to be with the people who are just going off historical data, so that makes sense. But looking at the weather now, it seems the rain's going to be in the morning, but there are scattered thunderstorms, so yeah, I would wait before game time for that stuff. Um, honestly, I just got to say, I do kind of disagree with Cam here. I think there is a small chance Tampa gets blown out. I don't think so, but I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I think that's Jack's Bills Mafia influence coming in again here. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I just think... Yeah, maybe I'm scarred from last week. I don't know. I just think uh, Mahomes is something else. So, yeah, I mean, just going on, we're going to get to our props now. I don't have a teaser, full disclosure, because I'm on the Chiefs side. So it's not really a plus EV situation to see them through zero. So I'm going to stay away from that. Um, but props, I did well on two weeks ago. I was 2-0 and with uh, Josh Allen completions got there and uh, Fournette rushing yards got there, which I didn't even bet myself, which I'm kicking myself for because I gave it away as uh, something to look for and then I backed off um, turns out he wasn't that afraid of the cold weather after all it seems so um, but for this week anyways I'm gonna look at Patrick Mahomes over 27 and a half completions um, it might be 28 and a half now even there I think there's value um, I laid minus 140 for that I just think they're pass heavy I think even if they're up I think Reed's gonna do what Reed does and do some gadget plays um, I think if you basically book like most people do Kelsey and Hill for a combined 17 or 18 then he only needs 10 others to get there. And I think they're going to have enough people to do that. Um, and I think Tampa is going to stuff the run. I think that's what strength of this Tampa team is up front. And the secondary, which has been playing better, I'm still not a huge fan of the Tampa Bay secondary. And, I, and we didn't see Drew Brees penalize them for that, obviously. Um, Aaron Rodgers did a bit, but it wasn't consistent enough. I think Mahomes will. And then I have some plays for you as well. My first one I'm going to get into. Uh, this line is pretty juiced right now. I think it's around minus 170 something. But Tyreek Hill over six and a half catches. Should be a pretty safe bet, but if you're a little more wild, you know, I'm betting my entire house, yellow Gatorade, that's going to be the Gatorade they throw on the coach. <laughs> all in. I'm all in. No, I'm kidding. Do not bet on those kind of props. <laughs> Unless you're a first-time gambler, you just want to have some fun, you have too much money and you want to lose it, go ahead. Those are way too risky for me, but there's always some fun props with Super Bowl. But yeah, I definitely would lean towards Tyree Kill over six and a half catches, but this line is pretty juiced, so I wouldn't throw a full unit on it. I'd probably go with half of what you normally bet on this one instead. Yeah, it's minus 175 right now. Um, yeah, so it's definitely a tougher one, so i definitely go with half of your normal bet instead of a full unit. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. And I'll, um, for my other one, it's just going to go... I'm, I'm playing a lot of props here just because the Super Bowl, I'm having some fun, but the two ones that, if I can only pick two, I'm going to couple Mahomes completions with Kelsey anytime touchdown, and there's not a lot of analysis. It's Travis Kelsey. It's the best pass catching tight end ever in my opinion Gronk's probably better Gronk's a better blocker um I don't think there's anyone better than Kelsey at catching it he scored uh yeah maybe maybe if he can uh, win, win a Super Bowl maybe um so he scored a touchdown each of his last six uh 10 total games throughout the years that touchdown um Mahomes is gonna look for him and I think uh, after what Tyree Hill did to them in the first quarter of the last game with 200 plus receiving yards I think they got to focus getting rid of him and you know they're gonna try and get rid of both of them but I prefer Kelsey anytime touchdown it's juice minus 163 where I got it just a lot of juice but you're not gonna get much better than that for a Super Bowl anytime touchdown for Kelsey so I'm gonna lay it for sure and yeah I mean I do have it written down for net over three and a half catches both of my plays by the way are from we've mentioned in the past uh, from Twitter guys we follow at prop that guy and at prop stars on Twitter but uh, yeah, they both recommended these plays and I'm on Fournette over three and a half catches as well. I believe this line's much, well, I know it's much better than the, the Tyreek Hill line is. But yeah, this one's not a bad play as well. I don't know, I'm a little hesitant towards it because I know the Bucks don't use their passing back, their backs too much in the passing game. But Ronald Jones has been uh, pretty much invincible for a little while now. So I would definitely not mind putting some money on Fournette. And like we said, you know, there's always fun props to the Super Bowl. It's our last football game of the year. So if you want to have fun with it, you know, COVID's been a shitty year. So go ahead and go, go you know, the anthem, the freaking coin toss, the Gatorade. Have some fun with it. Obviously, gamble responsibly, please. Don't be dumb. Don't be degenerate <laughs> like us. But 5,000 on the coin flip. 
Exactly. <laughs> I know people are betting on it already, and I just I don't understand how. I mean, I might as well just go play blackjack or something or play some roulette, but whatever floats your boat. But yeah, we're both looking forward to it. Jack, can you give us a final score prediction for the Super Bowl on the spot right now? 30-24 Chiefs. I'm going to go, I would say, I'm going to say Tom Brady is going to do it. 34 to 30 for the Bucks. High scoring, 64. I'm cheering for points, so it'll be entertaining <laughs> at least. But yeah, we're both looking forward to the Super Bowl. You know, we've had a fun little ride. Thank you guys for joining us on our first season of Chief to Spread. Let us know if you guys want to keep this going after the NFL season is done. I mean, me and Jack and I are both open to that. So you guys let us know what you think. Um, NFL is ending soon. Well, it's ending on Sunday. You guys will be watching this the next day. But we're definitely looking forward to some football action. You know, I wish it was Niners versus Bills, but unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be this year. Hopefully next year. But yeah, we're looking forward to the Super Bowl. Um, also, I want to say thank you to everybody who voted for us for the Faces Magazine Award. Unfortunately, we came up just short of it. We were finalists, though, so that's a great honor. We're really proud of that. But yeah, everybody, thank you for watching so far. Make sure to check us out on Instagram, 613 underscore sports. We do our new weekly recaps there as well every Monday. Jack and I are taking turns. Make sure to comment on this video. Go like this video and go subscribe. You don't want to miss anything happening all year. So three sports. Peace.